hello. Yep, yep, yep. Well, I come to you from Windsor, Ontario. And God's word was only closed until the time of the end, Daniel 12, 9, because it had to open to allow for his message, his word that's already written to come forth through his messenger. And being the messenger of love, uh, all I can do is raise my hands and praise him day after day because the very truth of it is I'm preaching out here to no one that has any appreciation for what I do that lets me know. It's a very hurtful thing to be trying your best to get across a message into this world of unconditional love that everyone needs and no one wants it. No one comments, no one thumbs up. A bunch of uh, people with spiritual focus that has them trapped in their brain, apparently. So praise the Lord that uh, within a moment of a moment's moment, the most fiery word of our Savior to the generations declared uh, unto me for the house of Christianity, Islam, and Judaism, which is now all Chrislam. Uh, that is the name of mankind, actually, if you want to get technical, because that is the name that the Lord God has given Israel in the latter days, Isaiah 62, 2, predicted he would have a latter day name. And that name is Chrislam because they have inherited all of Christians and Islamics and all of mankind. Because you see, the Bible's mystery is over. Once the covenant was given, that straightens out the mystery uh, that God's love has been unconditional. And it, it says clearly in Isaiah 54, 3, that Israel would inherit all mankind. And so he has joined us together. Uh, his prayer, his prophecy of Gethsemane for our oneness, it was a prophecy. And he has joined us by sending forth his message, the one that he prayed ever so um, uh, earnestly and passionately for in Gethsemane. So the Lord says, I am life, whole and undivided, not hewn from any stone or mudded from branches or rooted in any form of natural strength. And Emmanuel, the living word of God, he says, nor could any living thing that came forth in the beginning ever deny that it has its root in me. For it's my wisdom that's the root unto everything that eventually blossomed through my most mighty word of creation. And as it was, I was then fated to become mortal as the ones that I made. I am also therefore the flickering flame of life and love thereof that flashes ever so brightly from the east to the west and back again from whence it came. And it shines above the most beautiful beauty of the greenest fields of earth. For the Lord says, it is my most blinding light of love's most fervent passion in these days that shall begin burning as a oven for anyone paying attention. And for those that not, they could end up being like a frog um, if you turn on the heat on those suckers, they don't even realize they're cooking. So the Lord says uh, that not by power nor by might, but by the spirit of love shall, as it was in the beginning, so shall it be at the end. And he says, through my everlasting light of the world, I have brought something very special into it. For these are the days of the lion and the lamb and the eagle and the dove flying high, fluttering wings of love, soaring higher beyond infinity and back again, if that is possible. And praise God uh, that all that came into the world was spoken within uh, a moment of a moment, a second of a second, an instant of an instant. The Word who is our great I Am, He, His words, let it be, came forth with the force exploding 
as uh, supernovas all throughout the creation as all of humanity came forth. And praise God that uh, the Lord says, and man, mankind came forth by God's released energy of life uh, that's always shine like a star ablaze. And I, the future lamb and lion of God, says the Lord, then allowed my blinding illumination to shine ever so brightly unto Adam's race. For I am the giver of gifts who gave of myself as my very own light of the ages soon shined away over, over multitudes. And my people need to understand, says the Lord, that as the water flows over the whole earth, the soul likewise penetrates the whole body. Therefore I also burn in the sun and the moon, but I burn in multitudes of hearts set ablaze by loving faith within me. And upon my first coming I was most honored that my Father of Lights also proudly blazed away while announcing my arrival. And when I first came forth, says the Lord, as a humble celestial soul, I burn within my new terrestrial flesh much brighter than the brightest twinkles of the greatly renowned star of Bethlehem. And the outstanding glory of that star of stars, wisdom incarnate, when he came forth, it, it, it would come forth to outburn, outblaze, and outshine all of the other stars aglow. And that, uh, for it was true that our Father of blessedness had allowed that Son of Love to showcase his wisest words that are re resounding. And uh, so praise the Lord, it's time for our Prince of Peace. And he comes forth with a vengeance, saying, Peace, be still. And by the spirit of prophecy, it is most true, says the Lord, that many places of worship are being crucified be between two thieves because they have erroneous, false, man-made religious systems uh, and secular humanism that has caused nothing but spiritual racism and deafness in the body of Christ. It is an abomination. It is a calamity. And the Lord God says, all those that will not lift up his, his kingdom age, peace, love, and hope for a better age ahead, that he will take the dung from their uh, rotten feast and mush it in faces in Malachi 2 in preparation for his kingdoms to come, the golden age, which is just ahead of us. So people, let him become the very electric in your heart and he will super super giant super jive you he will energize you and supersize you he'll do whatever you want as long as you're willing but you cannot receive nothing unless you open your hands and if you open your palms right in the middle of yours you will feel uh, blessedness because of what his palms did for us so praise the Lord and um, love from love, hope from hope, peace from peace always. Uh, seek ye first the kingdom of love and all will be added unto you. And so the Lord says man is at the beginning stage of the great reformation of Acts 3.21. He has lowered the plumb line of Amos 9 uh, so that we can build straight walls and he tears down all distortions which was foretold in Hebrews 8 and Muhammad said the same thing and so praise God that he will bring forth the power of loves through a apostolistic uh, a movement of love uh, and it'll be restored by the obedient people of love in the days of the 144,000 wicks blazing as torches by the inspiration of our Lord, lighting their fires by his refiner's fire through this kingdom age channel of which this is the only one. So praise the Lord that these are the days when uh, many houses of praise uh, and how houses of scripture, they have become sold out 
to their books and they're worshiping their books. They're not listening to none of the words. The words were important. And uh, so they've skipped the simple while searching for the sensational during their pursuit of spiritual revivals. Through the fire of God, though all things shall be reversed. And as it was in the beginning, so shall it be at the end. For he shall bring forth the fire of his signs and wonders to marvel uh, any miracles ever done upon earth. And know that all of these things are very important, but people desiring such miracles that demand a sign, they're missing out on the simplicity of what uh, uh, just being a loving person means. We have made it all so complicated. Those who love are born of God and know God because God is love. That means every single person that has their love light on as a child. Jesus said you must be born again as a child, moving as a verb. We, we, we get on the path of blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, letting our love wax cold to where it goes out. Many are gonna say, Lord, Lord, he's gonna say, I don't know you. You let your light of love him and us go out because those who love are born of God and know God because God is love. That's Christ living in us. So praise God that the Lord is now bringing a new compass for new understanding and he is calling us all up to hear his word. So let the obedient understand that just as a structure can't surpass the strength of its foundation, so to our people now perishing without revelation while going backwards. So these are the days of heaven's light coming forth, all things being restored. You cannot restore anything unless you have a uh, revelation of revelation. You cannot make uh, bricks without straw. And I am one just like Moses, the kingdom age covenant giver, the revelator in time, and he who is the next Exodus leader to call all the wheat out from the tares. They cannot grow together any longer. And so praise the Lord that we will have a giant leap ahead. Satan removed for the next thousand years is right on the agenda. Fulfillment already at hand. And know that these are the days that the Lord shall only bring his obedient wheat forward. Uh, the rest will decay and rot in darkness of their religiosity because they have not arms obedient to receive. Um, of prophecy, it's such a vital, important thing. The Word of God stresses, you have, uh, 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 says that all prophecy must be examined most carefully and all that's good embraced. No one will even look at it. Very few. Muhammad said you have no ground to stand upon unless you stand upon the, the gospel of love, the law, and all revelation coming to you from your Lord. So these are the days that our beloved now will declare and hear the voice of Christ resounding again. He says, I was the cool of the day in the Garden of Eden. I was the burning bush in the desert and the wilderness. He was Nahum's vision. I was also the breath of life in Balaam's donkey, says the Lord, and the still small voice unto Elijah. Uh, and by my dove's whitest wings, along with the, his most regal eagle of the ends, the Lord says, I was the revelation of Jesus, the spirit of prophecy, and the rustling in the Mary, in the mulberry bushes. So praise God that he said, I was the presence forcing Israel's victory, and I was he whose hand wrote on the king's wall many, many tinkle, tinkle, so that he would know that his days were numbered, says the Lord. I was also the sword of Gideon and the bright star who guided the wise men, for I have always been the angel of the Lord, the ancient of days, everlasting Father, God with us, Emmanuel who spoke unto Abraham, and the second that the knife was over Abraham, within that moment, it proved if Emmanuel did not commit what he did to come to the world, it only would have proved that man does have the capability to out-love God, that we could, we could be more obedient to God 
then God would love us. He would not return the favor. And this was provable at that point. So the Lord says, I was the cleft in the rock. I was the fire in the cloud of Sinai and the tongues of fire on the day of Pentecost. I am that I am, and I am the revelation of Jesus Christ, who now reveals the story of love and sorrow. For I am the revelation of love who is close to the marriage altar. And when the grave opens, I shall stand nearby as I call wonder out of the grave. And resurrection shall happen all over the circle of earth. I am also he who rescues souls from the deep, and he that opens the lips of lovers. Through my word the dead whisper to the living, says truth. For I serve uh, one as I serve all, because I am as the amazement of amazing. The amazement of amazing. So I now, says the Lord, I have now opened a vista as a path of light unto the universe and uh, that path of light is calling out unto all the people of love for them to arise so that their cups can be filled for the lord god says i am the lamb of god who abandons not uh, his beloved who's choosing the path of love for all walking in the spirit of love are under no condemnation so uh, i now let uh, let all men now know says the Lord, that every person is precious in my sight, red and black and yellow and green and white. <laughs> I, I like that old poem. And the Lord says, even believers or not, rain rains on the just and the unjust. And know that whosoever will keep their love alive in me, all calling upon the name of the Lord, love will be saved for every knee will bow unto Christ's name which is love, 1 John 4, 7, capital L. So praise God. And so know that the Lord says, I am the quiet between the sounds of the seventh trumpet that can now be heard resounding, for Israel has inherited all mankind. And that news will be heralded all over the world, and such wonder will never cease because he alone is the victor of his people's victory. And he says, and as my spirit of love fights the battles of those of love, along with uh, my servants, the angels, I am preparing for my return. But let it be understood that my kingdom age covenant is the only preparation that will change this world to enable my return. Otherwise, the day of God's pouring out his, his adoration as a flood over all flesh, it'll turn into uh, a literal destruction, a, a total oblivion of Zephaniah 1.1. 1, 1. No birds, no fish, no mankind left on earth. But the Lord says, I am faithful and true, and I have sent my word anew. Uh, the second coming of my word of uh, Matthew 24, him on a cross. Uh, on the great white cloud. This is the happening of him sending forth his everlasting gospel of Revelation 14, standing on that great white cloud, which is the same as Matthew 24. And I am the writer of his gospel. This vision has been written for the appointed time at the end, so all those who heareth the reading may run and I am Shiloh, whose eyes are red and dull of wine. The vision has been written plainly on the tablet, so all those hearing it may run. Behold, he whose soul is not upright, but the just will live by my faith, even though I've been transgressed by wine, because I am as hell, and I will never be satisfied as I embrace all people of the earth to our glorious good shepherd over all the flocks of man, just as he foretold in John 10. Two and a half more years, a total of a time, times and a half a time, according to Daniel 12, you will discover on this planet the shattering of the power of the holy people. All canons will open, and religion as it has been will be no more. 
And uh, Paul wrote of the obsolescence in Hebrews 8, saying, when those words come, I will be your God, you will be my people, I will forgive your iniquity, I will never remember it. I'll write my law and my love on your hearts and hands beyond that. No one else will never need to be taught out of me anymore. All shall know me from the least to the greatest. If we just keep our love alive as a child. Jesus said you always have to be as a child. So the Lord says, I am the assurance of my faithful few. And I am the blessing of those desiring love. And the hope of those who shall come to believe in his word here at this kingdom age channel I am his messenger and they will believe that even though uh, the mountains will depart and are shaken so shall fear uh, not befall those of love if they will let their perfect love cast them up cast out fear for the Lord says I will give them my perfect peace that has always been far beyond the imagination of anyone so love from love until the next time, come back again.